Hi everyone, it's Laura here at Aquamarine 18. Welcome. I am here, you'll know from the description of the video or name of the video for a first impressions and unboxing. I didn't expect to be doing one of these necessarily um, so soon and in a recent video I talked about going more in a direction of detailed um, reviews rather than first impressions. But I got some exciting mail today that I had been waiting for and I figured if I was going to be um, you know, excitedly unboxing and going through um, my new deck on the sofa by myself, I might as well uh, film it, why not? Um, and in particular because it gives me the opportunity to continue um, talking a little bit about queer representation in tarot, which I made a video about um, a little while back, since I just have received the Numinous Tarot. And this is a deck that has been out for quite a while. I believe this is the second edition or second printing. The box doesn't specify that, but I think it is the second um, printing. So it's been on my radar for a while and there are quite a few videos about it. Um, other than giving my own kind of slant on things, I'm probably not producing anything new here. Um, but it was just a deck that I, I never um, purchased. I believe it was a Kickstarter. I missed the Kickstarter. Um, and it's a bit different from a lot of the decks that I'm usually drawn to in terms of its, um, its art style. So it was just never one that I had picked up. Um, I'd always, I'd always liked it, um, you know, but it had never, um, been at the very top of the list. Um, so I had never purchased it. And then I was, um, informed, I guess, or learned, um, I think first from Wyatt on the Cusp Tarot and his seven days of pride series where he featured this deck that the creator of the numinous tarot Noel, was having a pride special where if you order the deck during june then you would have some stickers included in your order as well and i was kind of re-looking at the deck and and got excited <laughs> thinking about um this deck so i clicked order and this was my um, tarot deck purchase for june um, i'm not doing depth year a lot of folks are um, doing depth year but I generally, just as a rule, really um, restrict myself to buying one deck per month, um, or maybe one tarot, one oracle per month, if that. I mean, I just find the overwhelm really real. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this deck ended up being one that I purchased in June on the very last day um, in June, and I'm really excited to work with it. Um, I just really love, from what I've seen, I haven't read the guidebook yet, obviously, um, but from what I've seen and, and the discussions I've seen of this deck, I really love just the politics of this deck so much. And I really love the diversity of folks depicted in this deck, which I'll talk about as we go through the cards, um, in terms diversity in terms of um, ethnicity and gender expression and sexuality and ability and you know body shape, body size, all, um, kind of aspects all in one deck, which is so, so rare. Um, sadly rare, really. Um, I think that, you know, we need to always be continuing to talk about um, the importance of diverse and meaningful and non-stereotypical and non-tokenizing um, positive representation in tarot and everywhere else, as I've said before. And even I think in my experience, you know, we can all probably think of these, some decks, you know, might get it, seem to get it really right in, in one kind of aspect of diversity, but perhaps um, are totally lacking in another. And this is a deck that from what I've seen really um, covers all the bases in a lot of ways, um, which I really like, and I'm really looking forward to working with this deck. And I think this would be a great deck for me to um, read for other people potentially. So I'm really excited to have it. Um, Four minutes in and I haven't even opened the box yet um, so this might be a rambly long one we'll see so I unwrapped um, the box already because I didn't want to be fumbling around with scissors in the video but it came packaged in this um, bubble wrap inside a cardboard box I was a bit worried because when it arrived the cardboard box had like a hole gouged in the side of it and I was like oh this um I hope it's not damaged but with the um, bubble wrap it was completely fine um, totally safe and sound. Um, so it came with the um, invoice inside, which I've just folded over because it has my address on it, with a little thank you so much.
from Noel, the creator of the deck. And it came with, for the Pride Special, um, some stickers. I don't even remember really what it said, like how many stickers. I didn't look to see which cards were the stickers. But it came in this pouch that says, Special Day, I always hope your happiness forever. So lovely, right? Uh, and they're these stickers feel like really um, good quality. I don't... Stickers are really not something I normally go for necessarily. I don't... Um, you know, when it's like a Kickstarter reward or things like this, it's not always one that I'm really excited about, but these are really nice and I'm going to have to kind of think about where I want to stick them actually. Um, so they're kind of, um, they're textured and they're, they're raised. So it looks like there's five. There's the lovers. The world. The Fool, and this was the first card I saw of this deck and I knew that it would be a special deck from that card. The Creator of Vials, so this deck has um, the court cards renamed in a um, non-gendered way. I'm not sure Creator, um, you know, which tier of the courts that that is, is, but we'll find out. And Justice, which was one of my favorite cards in the deck as well okay so it comes in this um, box here and the back has some of the cards on it and it says a vibrant magical deck and guidebook for everyone the numinous tarot is a 79 card deck and 126 page guidebook written for readers of all levels including beginners both the deck and guidebook feature gender neutral language, taking tarot beyond binary thinking and into a full spectrum of representation. This is interesting to me. Um, binary and spectrum get, um, what do I want to say, contrasted a lot, right? Like shifting to thinking about things in terms of a spectrum as opposed to there being just two um, kind of options, right? Um, or two ways of being. In terms of gender sexuality thinking in terms of a much broader kind of array um, array of existences and array of identities and array of of folks and i think that that's really great i do sometimes wish we had a better word than spectrum because spectrum for me still implies that there are two poles right like two ends and then there's a spectrum between them i wish there was a better word but for now spectrum is the word we've got <laughs> so it says detailed watercolor illustrations bring to life a map mystical exploration of the stories we tell about ourselves in our lives. Expressive and emotional, this deck will guide you through whatever path you walk during this lifetime. Created, illustrated, and written by Noel Arthur Heimpel. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And it has their website there. So the deck opens from the top. Um, I really like the box in terms of the art. I don't, I, I this will be a deck that needs me to make a box for it. I'm gonna have to go and find some really rainbow fabric in the ends bin. Um, it has this plastic well to keep the cards in. So the book sits on top and the cards sit inside this plastic piece. Um, I don't love this, but I will say, I mean, they shipped in really good condition. So in terms of keeping um, the card safe inside the package until you purchase it, this works really well. Um, in terms of storage for me, I would rather something more compact. So I will keep the box. Oh, the cards just fell <laughs> out of their band. I'll keep the box, but I'll make something more sturdy. Um, because I'm, you know, I'm inclined to throw something like this away, but then then the cards won't stay so secure. So I'll have to come up with something else. Where can I put this? Let's stick that over there. So the cards are in this band, or they were they were in this band until a second ago when I um, when I dropped them. Okay. So I'll put the cards there for a second and show the guidebook first. Here's the guidebook. You have the symbol on the back, which is also on the back of the cards. The Numinous Tarot Guidebook. And I suspect that that will be 
card number 12 on on the cover um which is often the hanged man or the hanged one but i you know will be changed um for this deck so the book comes with a table of contents that includes about this deck tarot basics which includes how to read tarot the fool's journeys the tarot court the suits reversals tarot spreads and then it goes into interpretations for the major arcana and minor arcana all with um Page numbers provided for that. Very helpful. So I'm not going to read through um, through all of this. Um, I've had a little bit of a look at this because when you order this deck, um, you also get a PDF, a PDF version of the guidebook. So um, I've been waiting for this to come for a while, um, not too long though, actually. Um, through like international shipping, having to go through customs and that from the US to Canada where I am. But I've had the PDF guidebook, which you download as soon as you kind of check out um, with your purchase, you can download the, the guidebook. So I've had a little bit of a look, um, a look at this, but um, something that I would, sh and I would share, um, not includes quite a bit here, um, kind of about themselves and how they came to the process of making the deck and what the deck has meant to them, a little bit about their practice, about their combination of Rider Waite Smith and um, you know intuition and personal card meanings and so on. Uh, they do note, and I think that this is something I, I will read in their introduction, they say, the names of the suits, court cards, and some of the major arcana have been changed for a variety of reasons. The top reason is the removal of gendered names and titles. You will see that the gender expression of the figures on the cards varies widely and may not match traditional associations. I do not gender my magic. There is no discussion of feminine or masculine energies within this guidebook. If you would like to add your personal associations concerning that, please feel free. I have left it open for the reader to decide. All of the figures are referred to in the guidebook with the personal pronoun they, them, or theirs. Usage of they as a singular pronoun has deep historical roots and is currently on the rise as an option. For those who don't fit into the he, she binary, such as myself, myself that is Noel, or for when a person's gender is unknown. If it sounds strange to you, that's okay. The more we use language and engage with the singular they, the more comfortable it will feel. Language is changing around us all the time. So the, the, just the tone of this guidebook feels really, um, really inviting to me, really inclusive to me, really positive. And I really appreciate that there is not going to be a discussion of masculine feminine energies in the guidebook. I think that it's really, um, it's really pervasive, right? Um, these kinds of concepts, even in decks where the names might have been changed or even in decks where the kind of gender presentation of the figures in the card might be different from say the Rider Waite Smith or even where the court cards are changed to be more gender neutral you still get discussion of masculine and feminine as energies as opposed to characteristics or qualities of people right very 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 frequently and it's tough and it's a thing that I um struggle with in all kinds of ways and I think about a lot and I'm appreciative of the fact that th this may be one of the first if not the first um, probably the first actually guidebook that I've had that very explicitly names this is not a thing that we'll be doing in this book right it's okay if you want to add that for yourself it's okay if working with masculine and feminine energies is part of your practice you can incorporate that layer into reading the cards and reading the meanings for yourself, but it's not here, you know? I really, really like that. So that's the little about this deck section. Um, they have talked about how the book is friendly for beginners, the deck is friendly for beginners. So there's um, content on tarot structure, shuffling, questions, a note about fortune telling, laying out the cards, interpreting the cards, the fool's journey, and so on reading for self versus reading for others. So it's a black and white guidebook and all of the majors get a description, upright meanings, keywords, reversed meanings, and reverse keywords 
taking up about a two, like a full two page, so that's all the fool. So you get a lot. And then in the minors, you get a single page of an upright meaning and a reversed meaning. So one page as opposed to two. Quite a lot. I'm looking forward to engaging with this more. And the cards are, from the looks of it, not in order. They're in an order, um, but they're not in the order that I'm used to. <laughs> um, so it looks like all the creators are together, for example, and then all of the aces are together, and the cards are, are quite sticky. The gilding sometimes does that. So I'm actually going to pause the video, unstick the cards, put them into the order of majors first, and then the wands, ace and up, cups, ace and up, and so on, um, so that I can just flip through them quickly in a way that I'm more, more used to. Uh, so just give me one moment and I will be right back. Okay, I'm really glad that I didn't try to do that on camera because that uh, actually took me quite a while to get the cards um, in order in 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 my order I should say when you put the cards in order um, there was a sense to how they were organized in the sense that it was all of the um, court cards first and then the fool and then the magician and all the aces um, or sort of the major arcana one and all the aces major arcana two and all the twos major arcana three and all the threes and so on um, so there was some order once I, I got the trick of it but um, yeah, that took a little while. Uh, so now the cards are in an order that I feel more confident um, talking about them and walking through them. And I've kind of um, tried not to pay too much attention so that I can give my first impressions of the cards as I do a very quick um, flip through. And okay, here we go. So for the fool, zero, we have a person diving into the unknown very um, suitable, I think. Um, this is, I've seen the, the Major Arcana, I've seen the cards on um, online and, and such. Um, and this is one of my favorites. And I will say, I don't always feel entirely comfortable doing a full walkthrough of a deck um, because I don't know exactly where the kind of copyright issues fall on something like that, like showing an entire deck in a single, um, in a single video, right? Um, but Noel has the deck posted to their website, so I feel okay with, with showing a full, um, the full deck. So one is the Magician. We get, I really like the inclusion of the, um, the astrological signs on the robes there. Oh, and I should show, here's the backs, fully reversible, really nice kind of pastel uh, colors. The cardstock, something that, one of the, one of the couple of things that kind of held me back on this deck at first was that I knew it was glossy cardstock. Um, glossy cardstock is not my favorite at all, but it does, it's um, a good thickness. It feels um, sturdy, you know, it feels good quality and the deck is nice and thick. The beautiful shiny shiny gold gilding there feels really special so number two which is usually the high priestess is the diviner so something I've noticed in my flip through as well is that in addition to um, taking out all of the gendered titles in the deck all of the major arcana titles that are overtly religious uh, so priestess for example uh, the devil as well have also been changed and i think you know it, it's not the first deck i've seen to do this and i think too when we think about uh, making the tarot accessible uh, for lots of folks and we think about that from a queer perspective or at least um, when i think of it that way uh, this makes a lot of sense, right? Given the 
negative ex experiences that so many folks, particularly um, queer folks, have with organized religion in various kinds of ways um, during their upbringings, right? Um, we know, for example, that um, LGBT youth are more likely statistically to experience things like homelessness. Uh, and, and a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, being kicked out of one's home, uh, which can be kind of religiously motivated, essentially. Uh, so taking away those really weighty uh, concepts like like devils and priests, you know, both in imagery and in, and in title, I think can be a accessibility thing. Um, and it's something that I appreciate very much. So key three is the nurturer. And I really like that they are outside under a tree. Really beautiful. Key four, the founder. I really like them too. Something else I've noticed, in when you get rid of the kind of um, court titles, which I would lump emperor and empress in as, as kind of courtly titles in the same way that king and queen are, right? Not only do you get rid of the gendered aspect, but you also, and this is something that I very much like, uh, get rid of this kind of sense of rigid hierarchy, right? When we think about the fool's journey and we think about the major arcana as a kind of progression, right? I don't think that means necessarily thinking about one as being above the other. Um, it, you know, and when we think about the courts, I think the same thing. Um, and Noel has a really great, I'll just share in the guidebook, a little chart of ways that you can think about things that court cards represent, right? And they include other people in our lives, who we need to become, our place in our communities, how we should or shouldn't behave, stages of growth, roles we play, aspects of us, who we used to be, how we relate to others, our attitudes, our worldviews, future stages of growth, right? And those things can be different. We can be in different stages. We can be in um, different, um, expressing different traits. We can be at different points on our personal development, you know, without imposing a kind of hierarchy on that of one being better or above the other one, right? Which I think that when you have something like, you know, kings and pages is automatically kind of imposed this sense of hierarchy and this deck gets rid of that too. Um, which for me as somebody who is, um, you know, politically and instinctively anti-hierarchical in all things, um, I find this really appealing too. So five, we see none of the um, frequently seen religious imagery of the higher family. We get the visionary. I love that the lover's card has a ton of people in it. I think that that is great. Um, we could think about that in terms of um, love amongst community, we can think about that in terms of have polyamorous um, kind of ways. There's lots of different ways that we could um, we could read that, but you get a sense of real kind of interconnection, right? Seven, the chariot is a unicorn and a person. Real sense of movement. So in this deck, strength is positioned at eight. And strength has a bear. And I really like how, um, let's see if I can focus it, how kind of peaceful the person's face is and how at ease they are here in this kind of um, non aggressive kind of strength, right? The hermit's title is the same. Quite traditional um, imagery in a lot of ways. Right? You have the, um, staff and lantern and standing on the snowy peaks and the robes there. The Wheel of Fortune here includes the four 
suits of candles, tomes, vials, and bells, which I think is really, is really nice for sure. Justice, one of my favorite cards in the deck that I've seen. Um, I really like the symmetry of this card, um, the sense of balance that you get. So I'm noticing um, all of the bottoms of the cards here, the titles, have different kind of um, colors. There doesn't seem to be really any pattern to it, but they just go nicely with the color of the card. I like that. So this is Spected, um, the cover of the book. Key 12, here the Hanged One. Um, I like this Hanged One very much. And I know this is um, really random, but what this card reminds me of um, with the water rising up there below, you can see there's water at the bottom rising. And there's the door into the tree there. When I was a kid, I really loved this um, Winnie the Pooh where there is a storm and they have to take the honey pots up the tree as the water is rising. Um, I don't know how that's going to affect my uh, reading of the meaning of that card, but that's what that card reminds me of. Key 13 is death, but very um, you know, non-traditional imagery here in a lot of ways. And I will say, so, again, something that kind of held me back on this deck, I react, and I have no idea why this is, um, the the many eyes is something that I, oh, can I focus here? Focus, please. The many, many eyes is something that I viscerally don't have a positive reaction to, and I'm not sure why it is, and this is not the only deck. Um, the wooden tarot has a whole lot of eyes in it, um, and I don't own that deck actually in, in large part for that reason. Um, you know, the art is beautiful, here, the many eyes is a bit of a struggle for me, I will admit. And I have no idea why, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Let's maybe read... I want to read a description because something that's nice in this, in this guidebook here, um, they include meanings, but they also include a description of the card for the majors, right? Um, a description of the artwork that they've included. So for the, de for the death card here, they write, A being with skull-like features watches the reader with their seven eyes. It's a lot of eyes, right? <laughs> seven. Their long dark hair is adorned with roses and other flowers fill the background behind them lit by candles and a glowing pentacle. These are flowers often associated with death or the beloved dead. Carnations, marigolds, calla lilies. Their clothing is adorned with a pattern of deadly nightshade, another plant of death and transformation. So it's really great when a, you know, and I wish perhaps that all the cards included this in a way, um, but I'm really glad the majors do um, speak to the specific art that the artist has chosen and the associations that they have, why they picked it, because in terms of the types of, of flowers and the plant pattern on the clothing, I don't know that I would have picked up um, on that, at least definitely not right away. Um, I'm not particularly um, knowledgeable about, about um, types of flowers, for example. So I'm really, really glad that that's included there. I think that that's really thoughtful. Temperance, title has stayed the same. Again, very symmetrical, um, which is great for, you know, temperance that deals so much with um, mindful combination and balance to be so symmetrical. So again, the devil has been renamed to the shadow, which I think will resonate with a lot of people in terms of how we think about the devil. And we have this sense of bondage that comes with this card. The tower, oh, sticky. <laughs> the tower, it's really beautifully painted. The star. I like that star. 
I like the inclusion of the um, constellations there. The moon, again, the many eyes. I'll need to think about this card more. The moon is a card that I'm very attached to as a Pisces. The sun, I always love when the sun is not a naked baby on a horse. I like that sun. So instead of judgment, we have awakening. And judgment is another one that could be really kind of religiously heavy, right? So I, I like that that is, um, is different here. And I really like this image a lot. Finally, the world. I like the inclusion of the, the moon phases that you can think about the kind of closure of a cycle or the, the re-beginning of a cycle that comes with the world and the, um, you know, a kind of a sense of completion of, of the fool's journey, but also a sense of return to the first. The extra card I mentioned, um, that this is a 79 card deck, so there's an extra card, the numinous. So you could use the extra card as a significator if you wanted to. It's a nice touch. I often don't use the extra cards, but it's pretty. Okay, so now we're into the minors, and this is a long video. I'm going to try to speed up a little tiny bit. Uh, so we have the suit of wands, which in this deck is candles. Ace of candles. Fiery spark like that. The two of candles. Here we have somebody using a walking aid. Um, which again is, is um, we don't often see representations of diverse abilities in our tarot decks. And this deck, not just in this card and in a few others as well, um, include, includes that, which I really like. Um, and I like the, the um, flame over the person's head here. It gives a sense of, um, you know, the spark of an idea and kind of going to put that idea into action that really works with the Two of Wands. The Three of Candles. Four of Candles. Quite Rider Waite Smith reminiscent in that one. Five of candles, everyone may be going to light the candle all at once. Um, so you could have a sense of kind of competition there. Six of candles, we get a great big cake. Seven of candles, fashion show. Eight of candles. But it's interesting that all the blue in this card for candles. Eight of wands you think of as very um, speedy, right? Um, but you get a sense of that, the, the eight candles combining and then the kind of bursting forth from that. Nine of candles. And ten of candles, so we don't have the um, gory <laughs> swords to the back, but we very much get that sense of of um, not swords. Of course, it's not swords to the back. This is candles, which is a wand suit. Um, so carrying the heavy burden, right? Um, we get that sense very much so with this person here. And I'll say something that I noticed about this deck too. Um, and there are a couple of decks like this, but not many. Um, th this deck is another one where there are a lot of cards in this deck that look like people I know, <laughs> um, which is interesting um, and really doesn't happen often. So the page, the pages 
are in this one called dreamers, which I like. Um, you think of the pages, you know, in terms of an idea or a message, right? Pages are messengers. A dreamer of candles, and it looks a bit like um, it looks like fireflies around them there. The knights are explorers. And this knight is riding atop a kind of lizard, perhaps. The queens are creators, or creator of candles. And what's usually the kings, we have mystics. So mystic is good for thinking about, um, you know, kings in terms of kind of leadership qualities and things like this. I think the renamings are really effective. So for cups, we have vials, self-explanatory, really, ace of vials. That's really beautiful. It's almost like a heart with the water kind of braiding in on itself there. Two of vials, we have a... Um, a human and a mer person <laughs> having a little intimate moment there um, and they are each holding shells and the, the person uh, the person who has legs is holding a shell that says fins on it a person with the fin is holding a shell that says legs that is so beautiful I love that three of vials Mixing in a cauldron here. Four of vials. Five of vials. Six of vials. Get the feel here of um, ancestor, um, ancestor connections. Beautiful. Seven of vials. And eight. Nine. This person looks so happy. I love it. So happy. And ten of vials. has the rainbow, really great. Dreamer of vials. Explorer. And the creator of vials, so this would be the queen of cups is one of the um, stickers they're awesome I love the hair is amazing and the mystic of vials so the suit of swords is bells, which of the four I think was maybe the least intuitively uh, obvious for me, I guess. But when you think about bells and um, the use of sound to clear a room, for example, totally um, bells for air makes sense. Ace of bells. It's interesting. The person is kind of um, well. You don't know the the person here is either 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 materializing or dematerializing. Not sure. Three of bells. Um, I really like that the three bells are not stabbing the heart <laughs> in the center. Um, you know, you could read this card certainly as um, 
you know, something coming in towards that heart in a, in a difficult way, but, but you wouldn't have to, which is nice. Four of bells, the retreat time. Five of bells. The six of bells, you get the six bells are chimes on the front of the boat. I really like that. I would hang that on my wall. I'm not going to because it's part of a deck that I intend to use, but that's really beautiful. Seven of bells. Eight. So we get that sense of feeling trapped without the swords needing to be there. The nine is heavy. Um, you know, the, the nightmare card, the anxiety there. And the 10. And again, you don't get the um, the swords but the person here has a it looks like an arrow in their back and they're weighted they're weighted down or weighing down the the bell and sinking here that's a lot it's a lot the dreamer of bells or the page explorer of bells or a knight I really like their badass armor. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Creator of bells. And mystic of bells. So the last two is tomes for pentacles and all of the tomes or books have a pentacle on the cover. So the Ace of Tomes, you can see called Grimoire there. Two of Tomes, person with two heads reading two books at once. You get the sense of, of juggling two things that the Two of Pentacles conveys. The Three of Tomes reading up on Rosemary there has books on anatomy and herbalism in the back. Sense of combining different skills, learning different skill sets. The four of tomes, the books are locked away. That's interesting. The five of tomes, and this was a, this was one that um, hit me when I saw it too. The five of tomes as a person outside of a library burning books to stay warm in the winter sense of hardship and surviving and the six of tomes with the free little library there um, we have some of these little libraries where I live they're really fun seven of tomes has a um, author signing their book. Eight of tomes. Nine of tomes. And the ten. It's a full library there. Lots of people inside. The dreamer of tomes, I love that. You can see kind of the energy um, bouncing off the pages of the book the person's reading there. The explorer of tomes. The creator of tomes. A lot of butterflies there. And finally, the last 
mystic or king of tomes in a really great patterned sweater there. So that's the Numinous Tarot. Um, I've enjoyed unboxing it. I'm really excited. Um, this is going to be, I know it's not, you know, it's not the first or anything, but this is going to be the deck that I work with for the rest of July. Um, I'm really excited um, to finally have this deck in my um, in my hands um, and get to really work through the guidebook and uh, read what Noel has to say about their art and um, you know the creative choices they made in the different um, depicting the different cards. I'm yeah, really glad um, to have gotten to unbox this deck and I'm gonna have to think of something very special to put these very nice um, stickers, these very nice stickers on. So um, thanks for watching and I hope everyone has a great day. Um, I'm going to go out, it's very nice um, outside here actually. Um, I just couldn't wait to unbox this deck. Um, so I am going to um, grab a cold drink and go outside on the back deck with the guidebook and start having a look at that. Um, I hope that everyone is well and have a great rest of your day. Bye.